Okay, so we're going to look at the problems on your 1D kinematics. So here we have um, the problem with the bat named Lars and the sound waves. So I see this as in two separate ways. I see this with Lars and then I see it with the sound. You have um, two different things going on, so you really need to look at them separately and see how they interact. Okay, so, so far what we do know is we know that Lars is traveling at 20 meters per second I'm right here. And then it tells us that sound is traveling at 330 meters per second. And it's basically saying, hey, Lars is going to send out the sound wave at 2 meters from the wall. How long is it going to take? So we're looking at distance. Um, is it going to take for the sound to bounce off and get back? Okay, so the sound's got to travel basically four meters. It's got to go two meters towards the wall and then two meters back to Lars. So we know that the sound has got to travel approximately four meters. So now you can use your velocity equals distance over time. And we know that velocity is 330 equals 4 over the time. And then to solve this, you would cross this up. So you get 330T um, equals 4. And then you divide by the 330, right? Sorry, I don't know why my pen isn't writing completely. Okay, so that's going to give us our T. So, our T for this is um, 0 0.012 seconds, okay, and essentially, um, we that's the same amount of time um, that we need to look out for Lars, right, because this is how far along it uh, takes for the sound to travel from Lars to the wall and then back to Lars, so... That's the time, so now we can use that same time with Lars's velocity to figure out how far it actually went. So again, we have um, the V equal D over T. Okay, and we know that Lars is going 20 meters per second. We're looking for the distance. Um, and we know that the time is that 0.012. All right, now we just do a little cross multiplication here. So multiply this guy up. And it tells us that the distance that um, Lars travels before the sound gets back to him is 0.24 meters. All right, now let's look at our red light. So we see that we have a car. Um, traveling at 15 meters per second. We know that the red light um, yellow time is three seconds and we want to know basically how far away from the light should you be in order to get past um, the light without having to break. Okay, so how far away can you be to basically run the yellow light is what we're looking at here. So we know the velocity is 15 meters per second and we know the time is three seconds so now we can use our velocity equals distance over time so we've got um, 15 and then we're looking for our distance and then our time was three so cross multiply Distance equals 45 meters. So you can be within 45 meters of the traffic light in order to make it through the yellow light. Okay, so now we're looking at um, the deer. So we see that the deer walks uh, 1,300 meters east and then 500 meters west and then another 300 meters west. Um, so we need to determine the distance and displacement for our 
little deer friend. Okay, so I'm going to make just a little vector diagram here. So looks like deer went 1,300 this way and then 500 back this way and then an additional 300 this way. Okay, so if we're looking at total distance, that doesn't have a direction, so we're just adding them all up. So literally 1,300, 500, and 300. Add them all up, and we get 2,100. Okay, so there's our total distance right there. All right, now let's talk about the displacement. Displacement is the difference between the beginning and ending spot. Okay, so if we call right here our beginning spot and label it as zero, and then this would be our final spot. So our deer went 1,300 meters, and then back 500, back 300. So basically, if we gave all of these um, components based on which dile uh, direction they're going, you'd have positive 1,300, negative 500, and negative 300. So anything going right is positive, anything going left was negative. So if you do that math right there, you will see that you have so that's going to give us 500. Now remember displacement must have a direction. So we need to know what direction this is. Well, if you look at it, it was a positive number, right? So that means it was going this way, and that is to the east. So we've got 500 meters to the east. Okay, I did want to make a quick note that questions four and five are both considered challenge problems because they're not necessarily um, as straightforward. Four is actually dealing with vector components and trigonometry. So for right now, I'm going to skip it. All right, so number five is definitely um, a challenging problem. So you have two things going on in this. You have a tourist and you have a bear. So I'm going to break their info up. So over here we have the tourist. Oh, we, over here we have Mr. Bear. So we know that the tourist is being chased by the bear. And the tourist is running at 4 meters per second. Um, and the vehicle is some distance D away. Now the bear is 26 meters behind the person so that we know they're at least 26 meters behind the tourist and then the tourist is D away from their forerunner okay and then it also tells us that our bear is traveling at six meters per second all right so the question here really is about the value of the uh, D, or distance, okay, that the tourist is from the forerunner, okay? So if they the distance is shorter than the value for D, the tourist is going to be fine anyways. We really want to worry about, for the maximum, we want to worry about the bear and the tourist reaching the car at the same time. That's the biggest distance it can be, and the tourist still be able to get away safely. So, in that case, that means that the tourist and bear arrive at the same time, so their times should be equivalent here, okay? So, the time for this and the time for the tourist, they should be the same. Now, we can set up two equations, okay? So, over here, we need a V equal D over T, and then over here, we'll have another V equal D over T. So, over here, it'll be 4 equals D over the T. On the other side, our velocity is 6. Our distance is 26 plus that D value, and we still need that T. Now we want to isolate the T, get the T by itself. So cross this up, 
So that would give us 4t equals d. And then over here, cross the t up. Sorry, this one. It'd be 6t equals 26 plus d. All right, now when we isolate the t, so we're going to divide by 4, divide by 4. So we've got for this one, t equals d over 4. And then over here, we've got this situation. We've got t equals 26 plus d. All right, now that we've got both of them isolated for t, um, we can set them equivalent to each other. Okay, so we've got d over 4 equals that t. And then t equals 26 plus d um, over 6. I think I forgot that down here for some reason. Okay, so now it's basically d over 4 is equal to 26 plus d over 6. That's a plus sign right there. Okay, now at this point is algebra. So we're going to do some cross multiplication here. So 6 times d, so on this side we have 6d. All right, and then we want to cross that 4 up. So that means 4 is being multiplied or distributed into this. So 4 times this, 4 times this. Okay, so that gives us 6d is equal to 104 plus 4d. Okay, now we want to isolate the d's, so get them on the both uh, on the same side here. So this would go away, and we'd have uh, 2d left over there. So essentially, 2d is equal to 104, divide by 2, divide by 2, and then d is 52 meters. Okay, so a little different, a little more challenging, but same equations. All right, so moving over to the back of your practice, we have two um, practice multiple choice um, AP exam questions. Okay, so on this first one, it's telling us we have a position versus time graph. So um, we have meters, and it's the unit here. Seconds is the unit there. Um, it wants the average sweet, uh, speed for the interval between one second and two seconds. So we want the average speed here. If you'll remember, the formula for average speed is the V final plus the V initial divided by 2. Okay, so our V final up here is definitely going to be 8. Our V initial, so if you kind of read across here, oops, um, you will see that this is a round three, so plus three divided by two. So eight plus three is 11. 11 divided by two gives us about 5.5 meters per second. Obviously, we'd have to round here, so 5.5 is going to give us six. And very last question, um, you have a student that is basically looking at a battery um, powered car. They're trying to determine if it operates at a constant speed. They need to do this with an experiment. What can they use? And we need two answers here. So hopefully you said the meter stick because that is what we used. The other thing that you could use are what's called photo gates. Photo gates are basically like a, a little camera little thing and when something passes through it, it uh, indicates that it has passed through it. So it's also another way to determine uh, distance and time in order to determine velocity. So those are the two for that one.